President, Secretaries, Under Secretaries, Ambassador Helen de la Vega, Ambassador HK, uh, welcome to Melbourne, distinguished guests. Uh, Mr. President, before I uh, start my uh, address, I just wanted to um, um, commence no, with uh, my um, uh, acknowledgement of the milestone you achieved at the Australian Parliament last Thursday. Your, addr your, your, your address was articulate, complimentary to both nations, and inspiring. It was almost nostalgic, you know, about the times when, as 11 and 12-year-olds, we were shared the stage at oratorical contests in La Salle. <laughs> you won the gold medal then, right? But in my reckoning, you won the platinum on Thursday. Thank you for making the Filipino people proud here and at home. Mr. President, allow, allow me to uh, present to you the overview of the Australia-Philippine Business Council and its members' views, interests, and investment plans. In May of this year, of, of last year, sorry, uh, Australia published the Southeast Asian Strategy Plan for 2040 where it identified opportunities for Australia and, in the, in the, and for Australian businesses in the region. For the Philippines, Australia identified four key industry sectors with tremendous growth potential and has committed to, acti to actively encourage Australian industry to think Filipino and engage. The four sectors include education and skills, agriculture, resource, resources, and green energy transition. The APBC has closely aligned with the Australia's findings and developed collaboration skills with its members and Australia organizations to maximize these opportunities. We also work closely with our Filipino counterparts, the Philippine Australia Business Council, and the Australia and New Zealand Chamber Philippines, sharing information, actively supporting each other with cross-border opportunities. APBC is pleased to report its early progress uh, in the following areas. In education, Murdoch University from Western Australia is actively pursuing student engagement programs and uh, with a number of Philippine universities they are also working on institutional collaboration, having signed an MOU uh, with DOST in April of 2023 to assist the development of the Philippine Virology Center in New Clark. It would be of interest to you to know that one of their international partners is another former classmate, John Lednicki. Yes. Uh, now an international leading light in infectious diseases and based in the University of Florida and sends you his regards. Another APBC member is Disrupted IT, an Australian tech company powered by Filipino engineers. Its, its core focus is founded on three pillars, education, hands-on vocational training and innovation. The, Philippine, the Filipino cybersecurity engineers rotate uh, their Australian technical uh, skills through, it, through their technical hub in Townsville, uh, in James Cook University in Townsville, allowing them to gain commercial experience in advanced cybersecurity tools. Today, they too will be signing an LOI with NDC. Following their early milestone today, Murdoch University is signing an MOU with National Development Corporation to establish the Southeast Asian Biosecurity Institute in the Philippines, aimed at enhancing the human 
and infrastructure capacity of the Philippines. It will ensure biosecurity preparedness into the full value chain, improving our Philippine plant and animal-based exports, directly addressing this imbalance of trade. A world first, uh, it is envisaged the, in, the Institute will be, will be accessible to the other Southeast Asian nations and deliver economic, social, and environmental benefits, not only for the Philippines, but also for our immediate neighbors. Murdoch University has partnered with Kansas State, the University of Florida again, and will collaboratively partner with NDC uh, and government agencies as, as local and, and local universities to establish the Southeast Asian Institute uh, in the Philippines. In resources, APBC is addressing the opportunity to tap the $1.3 trillion of the mining industry opportunities in the Philippines by forming a strategic alliance with OSMINE, the leading industry association for Australian mining, equipment, technology, and services. They promote the global advancement of technology and innovation in mining. Late last year, again, Murdoch University, in partnership this time with the APBC, applied for a grant from the Australia ASEAN Council, who are hosting today, this week for you, right, to deliver an R&D roadmap for the extraction of critical metals. The propose, it is proposed to develop a template for clean mining, including mineral processing using environmental, social, and culturally responsible processes. If awarded, the grant will fund, will fund, will be, the fund of the grant will, up, will go directly to the uh, DOST project. I'm reasonably confident that this application will be that will stand robust uh, uh, scrutiny. I'm confident that uh, we hopefully will be very successful. This is best practice will serve the Philippines well. And the R&D roadmap will guide the Philippines transition to clean energy and clean mining. In the green transition, green energy transition sector, the APBC has introduced Cyclone Energy to the Philippines, an Australian company with a unique environmentally focused waste to energy technology and process. Cyclone is establishing a footprint in the Philippines in partnership again with NDC and local Philippine investors. Its technology is capable of producing four outputs. Electricity, diesel, gasoline, and sustainable aviation fuel or SAF. Its first Philippine project is to produce diesel out of municipal solid waste, including plastics. The first production plant is expected to take 950 tons a day of municipal solid waste, producing 55 million liters of diesel per year. And that's just the first plant. Concurrently to this milestone, the R&D process will commence to deliver, uh, to derive SAF from aviation, uh, from, for, for aviation in partnership with four universities in Australia, as well as UP and De La Salle universities in the Philippines. The overall outcome will also help address landfill, our challenges there, and land rehabilitation. The cyclone process, right, and technology is a world first and it's happening first in the Philippines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raf. Thank, well, thank you very much for uh, that very warm welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Secretary Pascual, for your uh, introduction. Uh, I begin 
uh, today by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we, have our, on which we are having our meeting today. I, I pay my respects to their elders past and present and extend the respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples today. With us here today are uh, the House Speaker, uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Philippines, Speaker Martin Waldes, uh, Secretary of Finance, uh, Ralph uh, Recto, uh, of course, the uh, Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Secretary Fred Pascual, and uh, Secretary Lutilia, who, is, uh, I, who has been demoted to the lower level of the... <laughs> I, I don't know why that happened, but uh, Secretary Popo Lutilia uh, is also here. And uh, uh, the, uh, our, the Special Assistant for uh, Investments in the Philippines, uh, uh, Frederick Go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Um, also joining us is our ambassador, um, Helen De, De La Vega. And we have... Uh, uh, also with us, the uh, ambassador of the of Australia to uh, to the Philippines, Ambassador H. K. Hugh, and uh, of course all our distinguished guests, our very valuable partners in the private sector, and uh, those of uh, you who have uh, now stopped, have, have now put in your minds and have con uh, put in your consciousness uh, the possibilities and potentials of the Philippines. Australia holds a special place as the Philippines' newest strategic partner in the Indo-Pacific region. Through this visit, we are sending a clear message that the Philippines is enhancing our regional economic integration agenda on several aspects. I have always had myself a personal fondness for this city, so it is, a great, uh, to, it is a great opportunity to come back and visit, to be here at this forum with all of you. I am uh, honored to stand before such a distinguished audience today. Your presence in this gathering uh, speaks volumes about the importance of fostering robust business partnerships and collaborations between our nations. It not only underscores the significance of this forum, but also emphasizes the vitality of our economic and commercial ties. As such, I thank the business organizations who have been tirelessly working in fostering meaningful connections and facilitating practical and tangible business opportunities, providing insights, information exchange, and strategic engagements. Let me also extend my uh, appreciation to the companies that are already partnering with us and making it happen in the Philippines for your plans and significant investments that directly contribute to our economic development. Some of you have shared their, have your plans and commitment to the Philippines, and I'm grateful for your continued trust, confidence, and interest in our country. This assembly serves as a celebration of the robustness and resilience of the Philippine economy. We take pride in being an ideal destination for complementation in both manufacturing and services. Recent global challenges, especially those that were initially highlighted by the pandemic, have underscored the dangers of sole sourcing of, of con and, and concentrating that supply on a single country or a single source. The urgent need to diversify production locations and explore alternative materials to de-risk and minimize disruptions in supply chains has become self-evident. Moreover, the transition to a low carbon or net zero scenario has further propelled the de-risking trend. So for the Philippines, these global developments present an opportunity to, en to enhance our participation in regional and global value chains. As part of our development strategy, we are keen to explore new avenues of cooperation and foster mutually beneficial partnerships that are commercially meaningful, but also have a social effect. I invite esteemed Australian businesses 
to consider the Philippines as a reliable partner that can support your expansion and operations. Let us embark on a journey of strengthened economic ties, mutual growth, and shared successes. We remain steadfast in our commitment to purposeful reforms evident in key legislative amendments. And it is why uh, we always ask uh, members of the leadership of the legislature to join us. Because many of, the, many of the plans that we have and many of the initiatives that we are proposing and endorsing require new legislation. It is a new world, it is a new economy, it is a new global economy uh, to which we need to um, adjust not only our business sector, not only our private sector, not only our finance sector, but also our legislative sector to change, to make the very important structural changes that are necessary for us to adjust to the new global post-pandemic economy. For example, the amendments to the Public Service Act, the Foreign Investments Act, the Real Trade Liberalization Act, and Renewable Energy Act, they all mark a new era for strategic investments. Coupled with streamlined businesses, infrastructure development, and the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program, or the CREATE Act. These reforms position, position the Philippines as one of the fastest growing economies in Asia. In fact, we are in the process of improving the reforms under the CREATE Act and uh, we have uh, used as a guide the inputs that we have received from potential and present investors in the Philippines in terms of the ease of doing business, in terms of uh, modifying the tax structure, in terms of uh, uh, making it a more attractive investment destination. Our overhaul of fiscal incentive structures and responsive policies, including those facilitating public-private partnerships, or PPPs, play a pivotal role in promoting private sector participation. Furthermore, there is the establishment of the Maharlika Investment Fund, our sovereign wealth fund. And that underscores our dedication to financing priority projects and driving socio-economic impact. The key principle that we have adopted, the very fundamental principle that we have adopted, was to consider the private sector as partners in the development of our, and the transformation and development of our economy. It is uh, very early on, we quickly recognize that government can do very much, but we must also realize that government cannot do it alone. And the private sector does many things that government does not do. And there are certain things that government does that private sector actually would be better at doing than leaving it with the government. And so these partnerships have become very important, are central to uh, any transformation, any success that we, may, that we may enjoy in the near future. This is the view. Uh, of our, of our uh, strategic financial planners, our economic uh, group, and uh, all together, we, uh, we have all come to that conclusion, and it is something that we continue to promote and to continue to encourage. So we prioritize the ease of doing business, exemplified by efforts to simplify tax payments, streamline regulations, and showcase our unwavering support for businesses which I signed Executive Order Number 18, which establishes green lanes for strategic investments, simplifying procedures and reducing bureaucratic hurdles. Simply speaking, these uh, green lanes are, as we are slowly uh, transforming the way we do business, uh, both in the bureaucracy, both in government, uh, and of course uh, in the general economy, as uh, we are do, as we are, are awaiting the legislation to come through, as these have to be very examined in very clear, close detail, we have established these green lanes. And the general idea is that for any investor who comes to the Philippines, that they will no longer have to wing it, as it were, and try to go through the documentation process and learn as they go along. 
uh, they will be uh, they will be taken in hand by some uh, a, a a specific person and a specific group in each department, the relevant department, and though that that group uh, will attend to all the needs of a, a prospective investor so as to be able to, to put up a company, uh, to start a bank account, uh, to uh, get the, uh, the permitting down, to get the clearances, etc. And uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this we do so as to make more rapid uh, the uh, entry of foreign direct investment, but also to make businesses more profitable because the costs that are implied by inefficiencies are lessened at the very least. So I am uh, pleased to announce the enactment of three priority bills. The Public-Private Partnership Code of the Philippines, which paves the way for transformative partnerships and fosters infrastructure development. Number two, the Internet Transactions Act, which provides the framework for a robust digital economy aligning the country's policy with the demands of the 21st century. And finally, the Tatak Pinoy Act, or the Proudly Filipino Act, which I recently signed into law just last 26 February, which will support industry development and enable greater participation of the Philippines in global value chains. So we continue to accelerate and deepen policy reforms to improve the environment where businesses such as yours she will continue to thrive. On renewable energy, a very important part of our uh, strategic planning, we, afford, uh, we accord great importance to addressing climate change and achieving energy transition, as we in the Philippines are highly vulnerable to the climate crisis. In, this, in line with this, we have put in place several energy transition policies, investment enablers such as incentivizing energy efficiency and conservation, that will support and facilitate the efforts to decarbonize the economy. This move strengthens our dedication to environmental stewardship and encouraged, encourages the private sector to actively engage in sustainable practices. I recognize that Australia also places equal importance in this area, as it is a priority under the elevation of our strategic partnership. In this regard, I welcome the opportunity for greater cooperation on climate change and energy transition. I am glad to see that we have made a good start here today with the agreements that we have come to between our private sector partners. Aligned with our efforts on decarbonization, we are positioning ourselves as a regional hub for smart and sustainable manufacturing. To achieve this, we are at the forefront of attracting sustainability-driven strategic investments powered by renewable energy. We also recognize that there are complementarities to be explored in critical minerals, and we are open to having a dedicated dialogue with your companies about sustainable processing of green materials. This will be further supported by our strong adherence to high labor and environmental standards, we have our trade and investment policy tools in place through the ASEAN-Australia-New Zealand Free Trade Agreement and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement to enable our regional economic integration agenda. I am hopeful that this will be complemented by other policy tools that will enhance Philippines-Australia supply chain partnerships and facilitate greater foreign direct investments. So in conclusion, let me reiterate our gratitude for your presence and active engagement in this forum. The members of my economic team will provide the support needed by your businesses for investments to continuously grow and prosper. Together with you as our strategic partner, we can make investments happen in the Philippines. I am confident that the relationships forged here today will contribute significantly to the economic vibrancy of both our nations. Thank you very much, and good morning to you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the 
Philippine Business Forum and Presentation of Business Agreements. Thank you all for joining us. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat.